We, they were all written at the same time. They were, we were under the impression that we were going to finish all of them. So all the drum tracks were recorded, some guitar stuff. And really, we got down to the wire and thought, you know, we're not going to be able to finish all these. Let's just finish the ones that we've got most done on. Mm -hmm. And the ones that we got the most done on were, were kind of uh, some of the easier songs. And, you know, when you're in the studio, you kind of start off with some of the easier stuff and get used to the so, studio again. So these songs that are the rest of load are, kinda, I think they're a little more extreme. Some of the slower, heavier stuff, a little faster, a few more stripped down, kind of folksy songs. So a little more of the extremes, which is a lot of fun. shit together of us in the studio wanted to give you guys a little peek at uh, us rehearsing you guys can uh, get to hear a couple of the new tracks and uh, kind of just make yourself at home here in the studio and uh, I think we might even flip up to my house so we can show you uh, where me and James wrote the record right now what we're doing is we're just kind of writing the last couple of songs just to see how they sit and kind of just get them finished. Uh, we knew all the ideas that we wanted to turn into songs. And um, uh, like I said, we wrote about 90% of them last spring. And um, now we're just writing the last couple. Uh, we do that up at the dungeon, go down and uh, jam it with everybody at the studio and hopefully uh, cut the basic tracks of them in the next couple of days. Fuck. Time to party, uh, work. <laughs> Okay, 
That's all, man. That's all we've done so far. <laughs> we've got about 10 seconds of one song. This is the extravagant writing uh, facilities here. Most of it goes straight onto that when we sit here and jam. It goes through the board onto that, and then when we kind of get our arrangements together, put it down on the task cam here. Basically just a cassette with eight tracks on it. Go over to other guitar crap and fill around, see how uh, certain other guitars will work on certain shit. So, then mix, do a hot mix onto that, and then listen to it later and go, fuck, it's crap. It's fucking lying. Everything he's just said is fucking it's a lie. Everybody only listens to the vocals anyway, the lyrics. Okay. Yeah! yeah. This is secret, secret stuff. Don't listen now. No. Don't fucking think this shit. Hey, fucker! Why do we write such long fucking songs? Maybe it's just because... The others are short. Huh? Oh, the others are short? No, I just don't know. It, it's sort of six of, you know, you start with two and then four. It sort of ends up being six of that phrasing. Condom? Your condom. Oh, that Adam call him. I think he turned the camera off. All right, look! Oh, wow. How many drummers does it take to change the light bulb? Just one. One, because I'm hanging out with the singer. <laughs> one, as soon as he gets here. The first two, it's like you have to do all of it almost. That's what we should do. Huh? Yeah. Win the uh, light bulb from Lars' studio. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it right here. Yeah. This could be yours. Yeah. Fuck, I'm nervous. <laughs> Go. Man, what's all that noise in the back? Is that is that the the, the bar you're at? The new Motley Crew? Huh? Strippers? <laughs> oh God! You I know he was married. Well, yeah. <laughs> me and James are. This is typical. Me and James are here working our fucking asses off. Bob's out with the boys drinking crantinis at a strip bar. <laughs> On the way to somewhere, it's always the best time you should come up with lyric shit, so... Fucking paper right there, ready to write away and shit. 
little pin handy right there. Like fucking little holster for it. Fuck it. Fuck it. You know, so. You know? Always prepared. Yeah, going back and forth to Lars's and shit. I'd be late going there. Stop at Wendy's. I'd be eating a burger, talking on the phone, and writing down lyrics. Plus, uh, I had a little DAT player and kind of have a, you know, dictate little fucking notes here and there, too. <laughs> What happened to the hell's going on here? Damn it. Yeah. Oh, Woo! Not a loser! Hey, Sal, I'm Here's like uh, a couple of your beans. What? There's some of your beans. They didn't quite make it. Go to Russell. They're on the floor of the truck. <laughs> we started playing Demolition Derby. Real story for the Hatfield Patrol. I got it here soon. I have to <laughs> You got something for me, Greg? Bring it on, brother. Yo, fool. And you tell. Huh? You know what? Mars this is really that? cool, man. There's no alcohol in this uh, dishwashing soap. So, you know. Yeah, Greg. Yeah. You know, for us, for us that drink a lot of it, dirt. you know, it's good. Yeah. yeah. You're always so well connected. Let's do some dirt. Huh? We just did. Huh? Snipper. 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 your loved one. Snipper. 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 I'm uh, getting my noyish meat. Let's get some heavy metal rock. Lars can after eating a fucking 10-pound burrito. <laughs> Look at it. He lay waste. Remember, you had the before picture, didn't you? There's the aftermath there. So he's he's going to be pretty good tonight, I think. So uh, pretty safe to say the songs would be a bit slower. <laughs> so it's just kind of it's like. It's cool, but it's also taken a little longer just because of being at home, even though the actual recording itself is going quicker. So we are just entering into the phase what we call crunch time, which is basically like fucking blinders on, fucking eliminate everything else in your measly life. Fucking six, seven days a week, 14, 16 hour days. Go for it and get this done. Um, so that's what we're doing right now, and um, that's kind of what we're going to do from now till it's done. Bob, can you hear me? Can you hear me? No. Can you hear me now? Hello? No, I can't. <laughs> oh, I'm not. That's that, that's that riff. Just F sharp and then F. Okay. Every other time. Every two and four. session which obviously set the record back two three months we kind of wanted to do these couple gigs the Donington and the Tuck to Yog Tuck and the club that we gig did for all, all our fan club friends there to kind of just I guess prove to ourselves that we could put pull that type of shit off and we did probably three of the best gigs we've ever done. Who plays guitar here? I do. I do. You? <laughs> all right, all right. We're going to black market music. That's a place where I get a lot of my equipment. 
Okay, I'm now, now taking you guys to the worst area in San Francisco. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> where's the <Yeah>, seatbelt? <laughs> well, we know the brakes work, Kurt. Right here, right? Yeah. Hey, how you doing, man? Well, I have like a bunch of uh, uh, contest winners and um, we're filming it for, you know, some band thing. I was wondering if it's okay if we, we filmed it there. actually here. Do you want to start up with a steel bead or a stone bead? So Kurt's helping me out to get another one. With Don't his... fuck up. I will. Stick with it. Okay, man, here. I hope the chick's like this. <laughs> so the number one rule is don't touch your piercing with dirty hands. You can piss on it, actually, because your, your piss is sterile to your own body, so you can piss oh, on it. Oh, okay, that's great. All right. Piss on All right. You're set then, man. Um, but I can, I can take a bath? Yeah, just make sure the bathtub's clean. Of course you can take a bath. <laughs> okay, deep breath. And exhale. Hold on a second. We're just gonna... When I, I did my mind bled for three days straight. Oh yeah? Yeah. Wait, let me see everybody so I can match up the face with the face. That's Leo, Leo there. That's two over here. Leo. Leo, okay. Simon from Finland. What's up, man? Tony will show you a good time. Yeah. Last week, last week in this room, we put in 60 hours minimum. Just. Alright, so that. Would you like it? Alright. Are they all there? Hey, have a good time. Alright, Finny. Hi, how are you doing? I'm Lars. 
Welcome to California. What did you do to win? Really huge. Setting like this kick ass stage set up. It's like that long, that tall, fucking pyrotechnics in the front. <laughs> Do I hear a new song? Come on. Can you hear me yet, bro? Can you hear me? And he's playing it better than Kirk, too. Yeah. Oh. 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 Play it. Okay. Hey, Leo, if you go in there in the controller, you can hear it better. Okay. You'll hear uh, the whole band playing. A master. Ooh. A puppet. <laughs> Talk to you about a, your future, man. <laughs> <laughs> Recording contract. Okay. For somebody. Let's do something about you. Yeah. They're doing something about you. Everybody's sweet. Everybody's sweet. We got someone who knows what's going on, maybe. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, How can you remember all that shit live? Oh, you got it written down. It says I do. Am I evil? Yes, I am. Am I evil? I am man. Yes, I am. My mother died I lost my head What can I say? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're gonna go on a little cruise with the kids today. Maybe, if I get this little bastard out of here. This, uh, been totally getting into bikes lately. Trying to get myself together and pretending I'm young again and everything. Got a BMX bike, this one. Bringing back my youth, breaking my arms. And, I mean, no, I didn't say that. There's a lot of cool stuff to see. There's going to be a lot of bikes out today. Saturday, 
There's people everywhere on okay. Saturday and Sunday, some weekends around here. This is a really popular place to be. Excellent. I'm here. Everything can begin now. Successful, no broken bones. No casualties as of yet. But the day is young. <laughs> All right, Neil, what do you got going, man? Talk to me. I bet you didn't awesome. think you'd come out here and exercise, huh? I know it, man. It's a huh? You guys are all out of shape. Cool. Gotta yeah. get you guys all hipped up. Way out of shape. Yeah. You can't have that, good. you know? We play three hour gigs. We want our fans to be there with us. Huh? Roy? Leo? Ron. <laughs> Ron. What do you want to be called today? Just call me Ron. That's fine, Les. Oh, two more punters. Ow! Hey. Hey. You Metallica. Aren't you Metallica fans? They're coming here later. How you doing, Benny? Benny? Who's the hot mama back there? Some chick I picked up on the way. Wow. Don't fucking touch it. It'll start barking. <laughs> When's the movie coming out? Huh? When's your first day? I'm just excited to be with all just my door, friends man. here. <laughs> this is the lady that will, would not let me into Tube Town. Know, she doesn't incredible. believe that I'm under 12. Mm -hmm. so look at that. Alright, let's shoot each other. What's going to happen now here in the queue? I don't know, I'm just going to stand there and shoot Tony over and over. <laughs> <laughs> shoot, the, shoot the easiest target. That's it. Let's see the sign of the devil. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. All right, rocking. Ah! An old bank shot. There you go, pal. Okay. It's the old set. That's, that's Ron. This is Ron, my friend Ron. That's right. Right, <laughs> right. Are you ready to get that? Yeah, you got six, six and six. Right. I hit 47, I got hit 28 times. Hit ratio 44%. 28. You're green. Friendly fire. Green two. Yeah. Friendly fire, man. So you got hit twice by green 16. Your own guys hit It's, you know, things are great. It's, it's, it's a very good time uh, to be in Metallica once again. Show us how large drives. Uh, <laughs> is, is, is everyone wearing their seatbelt? <laughs> no, no. Come on, you fucking dick. Huh? It's always good when you're gonna drive like a fucking idiot to always hang over to the right. So, like, people, people get really pissed off when you always pass them on the inside. But it's like if you're gonna fucking drive 80 or 90, it's much better to do it in the right hand lane because a lot of cops and shit sit and kind of monitor more the left lanes, the fucking speed lanes. So I'm always driving fucking 90 fucking on the inside lane. I mean, I can flip it off more than like anybody. <laughs> but it gets me from point A to point B quicker than most other people. There comes a point in your life where you kind of like where you kind of just like realize it and deal with it. So a little earlier tomorrow, eight. you guys are going to work? Seven or eight. Seven or eight? Cool. Real guitars? Remember that, Seth? Very nice. So are we rolling, Kent? Nope, we will be. Okay. Yeah. I'm ready. I'll, I'll, I'll just look, pick it up tomorrow. Look, but I don't think so. I don't need it tonight. I'm just going to sleep. I think you're going to have a track of all this stuff. I know, I'm just... I'm just See y'all. Cheers. I got my B-bender here. See you, Kurt. Right now what we're doing is we're just kind of riding 
the last couple of songs just to see how they sit and kind of just get them finished. Uh, we knew all the ideas that we wanted to turn into songs and um, uh, like I said, we wrote about 90% of them last spring and um, now we're just writing the last couple. Uh, we do that up at the dungeon, go down and uh, jam it with everybody at the studio and hopefully uh, cut the basic tracks in the next couple of days. Time to party. Uh, work. Jason, wake up. Time to rock. We're doing a hot mix. And, uh, I probably 10, 10, 30. Okay, see ya. Hello. Bob. Bob Rock. See if you'll produce the record. Huh? <laughs> hey, Bob, man. What's all that noise in the back? Is that is that the the, the bar you're at? The new Motley Crue. Huh? Strippers? <laughs> oh God! I you thought know? he was married. Well, yeah. <laughs> Me and James are. This is typical. Me and James are here working our fucking asses off. Bob's out with the boys drinking Crantini's at a strip bar. Yeah. Fuck! I'm nervous. <laughs> First two, it's like you have to do all of it almost. And then we can see it. And when we do the vocals, we can see if we want to keep singing all the way out, if we want to just do one chorus or two choruses and then fade on the guitar. So a full chorus. Don't have Adam call. I think you turn the camera off. All right, look. Oh, wow. How many drummers does it take to change the light bulb? Just one. One, because I'm hanging out with the singer. <laughs> uh -huh. One, as soon as he gets here. Uh. That's what we should do. Huh? Yeah. Win the uh, light bulb from Lars' studio. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it right here. Uh -huh. This could be yours. Extravagant writing uh, facilities here. Most of it goes straight onto that. When we sit here and jam, it goes through the board onto that, and then when we kind of get our arrangements together, put it down on the task cam here. Basically, just hook a set with eight tracks on it. Go over to other guitar crap and fill around, see how uh, certain other guitars will work on certain shit. So, then mix, do a hot mix onto that, and then listen to it later and go, fuck, it's crap. He's fucking lying. Everything he's just said is fucking a lie. Nice. Anyway, the lyrics. Why don't we write such long fucking songs? Maybe it's just because... The others are short. Huh? The others are short? No, I just don't know. It, it's sort of six of, you know, you start with two and then four. It sort of ends up being six of that phrasing. Well, 
But I can't bear to see what I've let me be I'm drawing the line The new album, Load, meaning a mental burden, presents a daring new direction that Metallica has fearlessly ventured. Boldly using slide guitar and a fretless bass brought a slight southern rock groove to the otherwise known heavy metal masters. Singer, writer, guitarist James Hetfield has fathered another astonishing creation with songs that are as undebated as the creation of the universe. Although Load is pulsing with funk and groove, Metallica is still the same hard-hitting, kick-ass band they've always been. Chicks come in. The chicks and the horns. Forty chicks. The horns. There's where the horns come in. <laughs> cool. Condom. Your condom. Okay. Yeah. This is secret, secret stuff. Don't listen now. No. Don't fucking think this shit. Hey, fucker! So, make a paper right there ready to write away. And a little pin handy right there. Going back and forth to Lars's and I'd be late going there. Stop at Wendy's. I'd be eating a burger, talking on the phone, and writing down lyrics. What the hell's going on here? Yeah, damn Remember, you had the before picture, didn't you? Right. There's the aftermath there. So he's he's going to be pretty good tonight, I think. So, uh, three seconds to say the songs would be a bit slower. <laughs> James Kerr. Now, even at me, oh man. This is an old man. We're taking a precedent here. Lars is listening to all of us at once. Seriously, yeah. On 
the actual recording itself is going quicker. So we are just entering into the phase what we call crunch time, which is basically like fucking blinders on, fucking eliminate everything else in your measly life, fucking six, seven days a week, 14, 16 hour days, go for it and get this done. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. And um, that's kind of what we're gonna do from now till it's done. Drum kit, there's a bass guitar, there's James Hetfield on the left, there's Kirk Hammond on the right, there's Metallica. We're live. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No. Can you hear me now? Hello? No, I can't. <laughs> oh, I'm not. That's that, that's that riff. Load was produced by Bob Rock with James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich. During the making of their previous album Metallica, there was a great deal of conflict between producer and the band, which almost halted the completion of the album. They were able to overcome their differences and open a new door to creation and imagination. I think what happened, which is that metal kind of got got kind of stagnant and it, it really was I think experiencing a lack of new creative things that were going on and I think that's why a lot of people got kind of bored with it because it was just rehashed ideas of what other bands were doing and I think I, I really do believe that a lot of people kind of got bored with it because it there was nothing new happening and I think that um, the couple of bands that do come out with new things and breathe fresh air, people take note of it, but I think to a large extent, a lot of the stuff in the 80s and stuff just kind of disappeared of itself. Do you know what I mean? Because nothing creatively was really going on with it. And I think a lot of, I do believe that a lot of people had to have a, a, um, that the whole thing with alternative and stuff like that, that the technique stuff and all that got to be too much for people, certain people to deal with that they wanted to be able to play a guitar and try and write songs and stuff like that without feeling that they had to be the next Eddie Van Halen. And I think that um, once people, the Cobains of the world and stuff like that went out and proved to them that you didn't have to be a guitar aficionado to play guitar, that it could just be an instrument that you could write songs on and stuff like that. I think people, a lot of people I think could really identify with that and it really inspired a lot of people to try new things where the metal thing had always been so a technique oriented and, and I think that turned a lot so of people easier. off. Just F sharp and then F. Okay. Every other time. Every two and four. Okay, so say you're doing uh, 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 basically what you what you could do is is like okay you did the the heavy riff which is the way you started where it's up and then you go into this say like the verse feel here right then what you could do is like you could uh, descend but play the same thing so boom get down get down get down get down get down get down and then do go back to your original riff on the bass note you're talking yeah yeah in other words uh It's all coming off an A, but what you do is you kind of, you, you might have to change it, but you're all, in other words, you're kind of using the same. Just a sec. Yeah. So, okay, so uh, play the first riff, the up-tempo one, the original one.
Yeah? But those are some of the ways you can, you know what I mean? So it's like the same riff. But, but you know what would be really cool is to put a stop somewhere. Like when you do go down to that, when you do the, do the modulating one. You know, like you go, bum, bum, and then you go to the B thing, and then you go like, blah, hang, two, three, four, and then to the fast riff again, or something. You know, so you do give it a bit of a break. Hey, man, there's a lot of cool stuff there. We can fiddle later. Yeah, that's rehearse. Go, Bob. Something like that? Yeah, let's see how I do. Maybe just the only thing is, just not, too dynamic, you know what I mean? That that it does, it's not like heavy riff, you know, that the, the, the dynamics are not that extreme, that's the only thing. You know what I mean? Like all stays on electric or you know the rhythm section basically does this. My killing joke, new killing joke album, a lot of songs just one riff all the way through with a lot of dynamics sweeping in and out. It's really it's inspired by that sound garden thing that fell on Black Days, where it's the same riff for four yeah. minutes, it's just the vocals that change. Yeah. That's like a lot of songs on that last Killing Joke album. But even, even if you change the bass underneath, like what James was, was doing, is just a little bit of a change, that's all you need. Boom, 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 boom. No skip. Descending thing, James, is really nice. That's the kind of thing. Just to change it up slightly. Is Zach in there? We did something we've never really done before. It's going to be a lot of work. I just want to make sure that you're, you've got all the, if you're going to do these changes and stuff, you feel good about it. So yeah, I know, that's why I need to do it. I just thought me and James had a really uh, good three hours of it. We had to talk for about two hours. We went through all the songs. We went through everything Cliff was made. We went through a lot of that stuff. It was very so you're cool. going to do it again tomorrow? Yeah, it's just very cool. And we talked about this thing about trying to severely chop them, not just, you know, you know, it's like, let's try it and just see what it feels like. And I look forward to hearing it. I mean, that's about, I, I, you know, three days ago, I didn't think I could take that much out of it, one of our songs, and I just did, and lived to talk about it afterwards. You know what I mean? It's kind of like... You can do it, yeah. Yeah, it's like, once you did it, it was like, it's okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it sounds, because yeah, it can go back in. Huh? You can go back in. Yeah. If need to, if you need it to be. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you're gonna come in and edit the lead? Yes, I will, Lars. As soon as I head up. My life is Metallica. I know. I love 
I love Metallica. My life. I love Metallica and my life. I love Metallica. Metallica is my life, and I love it. Let's play Guess Who's Not in the Room. Bob! <laughs> Producer Bob Rock was back on board for Load, of course, and Metallica itself was a changed band, rested, mature, and operating now with a new, more democratic spirit. Now it's like a tighter thing than it's ever been before. It's, it's kind of weird. Eat a bunch of peaches. What? Something like that. Just like ten times in a row, we just sang that the whole time. Who did? There's some guy on the radio and a song. And there's more ass on the radio these days. It's amazing, man. I turn on the radio and I feel like just shooting it. And I think they're just being trying to be clever, but it's just really, really fast. It's really stupid. I love a few years ago. Whoa. I know. That was really stupid. Stuff like that does not age well. I'll be fine then. So a little earlier tomorrow, eight, you guys are going to work? Seven or eight. Seven or eight? Cool. Real guitars? Real guitars. That's it. Very nice. So are we rolling, Kent? No, we will be. Okay. I'm rolling. I'll, I'll, I'll just pick it up tomorrow. Look, I don't think so. 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 I don't Seeker. I wanted to give you guys a little peek at uh... there are all the songs were written at the same time and uh, we basically wanted to have a double CD but ran out of time and patience and uh, so we split them in half I think we might have just had a little more time to to think about the other songs the songs that didn't make it on load uh, that weren't finished you know 
So uh, I guess we took into, uh, I guess some of the, the load production, we kind of were thinking a little more about, you know, when it came time to the reload stuff. There was rewriting of some lyrics and redoing of a finished first. And you usually start with a kind of shorter, little maybe easier songs when you're first in the studio, especially, you know, we haven't been in the studio for five years. And, uh, 27 songs in one stretch. And basically, Load was supposed to be a double album. That's what we went into the studio to develop, a double album. And then about six months later, uh, Peter and Cliff came out to, um, our managers came out to uh, San Francisco and said, you know, we got a chance to play Lollapalooza, blah, blah, blah. And we were like, well, instead of trying to finish these 27 songs, why don't we just put a record out for Lollapalooza and go out and play Lollapalooza and do some touring of our own and then come back and finish the other 13. That was pretty much it in a nutshell. Reload are not remixes, they're not leftover stuff, they're not B-sides, they're, right. they're the rest of the songs, the right. songs that we didn't finish. And I think, I think they're the more extreme, you know, and heavier and stripped down ways, different ways, because, you know, when you first get in the studio, you kind of, you go with the kind of easier ones or to kind of break into the studio. So we got, you know, the first 14 done, and these are the kind of more intense and uh, a little more difficult ones, you know, we had saved for the end, so that's, you know, where these come into play now. Do <laughs> oh. oh. I hear a new song? Come on. <laughs> raw in terms yeah. of it just has like two guitars, uh, drums and bass, a couple of vocal effects and stuff like that. Whereas the rest of the album ranges yeah. over many stylistic strategies, right? <laughs> 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 <laughs>